and welcome back to the Citizen Channel. You're all staying safe and well on our preview show of the Manchester City versus Dortmund Champions League game. Hopefully I'll be back in the UK to watch this, but it will be a tight run thing. So let's hope the planes don't let me down. We don't get delayed. I'll be able to get home and get off to the match. So fingers crossed for that one, guys. Keep your fingers crossed for me, please. Uh, yep, yeah, so preview of this uh, upcoming Champions League match day two, isn't it? So there we go, good good start, obviously over in Seville, which we did the review for the other day. Uh, this is on BT Sport, please. If you do like what you see, please push that subscribe button, push the bell notification, it'd be great to have you on board and spread the word. I do all these city things, past, present and forever, I call it. do a lot of history stuff as well, if, you, if you're new to the channel, so there's lots on there for you to have a look at. I do film and TV as well, so... Have a look at that, please. Thumbs up, make an old hot city fan very happy. I'll be nice and cool next week when I come back to England, no doubt, but uh, still warm at the moment over, over here in Rhodes in Greece. So please uh, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. Right, yes, it's on BT Sport this game if you're not getting down to the match. And uh, the odds on the game, please, when the fun stops, stop and be gamble away. Champions League itself, City are still firm favourites. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I, I, I mean, I keep saying, is, is this our year? But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you've watched my vlogs over the last two or three years, I was sort of laying City early doors in the Champions League because I didn't have much confidence. And certainly at 9-4 to four to win it at the moment, yeah, you could be putting a 5 or a 10 on every week and laying it and making a bit of money by the end of the by the disappointment, but I've stopped doing that now. So anyway, still firm favourites nine to four. PSG are the second favourites nine to two. Bayern Munich is six to one. Liverpool eight to one. So yeah, we're well in. I'm mean, usually it's us and Bayern at the top. But obviously Bayern aren't even second favourites at the moment. The match odds, yeah, the match odds against Dortmund, yeah, two to nine on for City. No surprise. The draw is six to one, and a Dortmund win is twelve to one. All those prices are at the tenth of September, twenty twenty two. And yes, the last time we played them, we've not played them that often, as you know, in competitive games. The last time at the Etihad, City versus Dortmund, 6th of April 2021. Yeah, Champions League quarter-final. Yeah, good. interesting game. It felt a bit closer than it was. I thought City were probably always the better team. Uh, certainly the, the, the quarter-final at the Etihad. Obviously, it was uh, the circumstances. We took the lead in the 19th minute. Uh, oh, the team, yeah, the team. Let's get interesting team. We could actually put this out as well this time if uh, we didn't have injuries. Uh, Edison, Walker, Diaz, Stones, Cancelo, Rodri, Gundo, Bernardo, Foden, Mares, and De Bruyne. So all that, all them guys are on the team, which is unusual when we do these look backs at the last game. I've obviously, we have probably lost Walker and Stones for this one, haven't we, through injuries. I'm, I'm not too sure they'll be ready to come back, even if they might be on the bench. So, yeah, we took the lead in the 19th minute. Mara's intercepted. This is from the match report at the time. Mara's intercepted on Emery Khan's loose pass in midfield. Yeah, he's still around from there. De Bruyne drove forward at pace and found the advancing Foden down the left. Foden's cross eluded everyone. Mara stopped it before it went out and timed his cut back perfectly for De Bruyne to drill across the keeper at the near post. So that was 1 0. Dortmund did equalise though in the 84th minute with a beautifully constructed goal. The highly impressive on the night, and he's still there. Unfortunately, if he chooses to have a good game, Bellingham fainted away from Gundo in midfield and played a ball forward. Roos, another player still there, latched onto Haaland's round the corner flick. Haaland, oh, I think I know that name, yeah. He's, he's not there anymore, is he? Uh, and stayed the ball inside Edison's left hand post. But our persistence, and that's what it was, because we were the better team on the night. We thoroughly deserved the win. It was rewarded in the 90th minute. Yeah, we were there that night, guys. That was a big relief. De Bruyne played a terrific diagonal pass. Gundogan controlled it, laid it off, and Foden steered it low past. Hits, he's not, I don't think he's there anymore. Hits to make it 2-1. So overall, competitively against Dortmund, we played 4, won 2, drawn 1, and lost 1. So I'll take that. We scored 5 and let him 4. So... Not a lot of goals in these games. Uh, I'm hoping there might be one or two more than the normal one or two in this one. So Dortmund themselves, yeah, obviously if you look at the outs, the obvious big outs, if you like, the big outs were Haaland, I don't know where he went, and a guy called Akanji, I don't know where he went either. But uh, yeah, interesting, isn't it, that uh, both of those potentially could be playing, or certainly one of them will be playing this, this week. Uh, no doubt about that. I'm not too sure about the other one. We'll, we'll have a think on that one in a minute. 
Uh, in though they were obviously had to replace, haven't they? So they have bought three sort of come got bought one sort of centre forward come winger and a couple of centre forwards as well. Alright, not not big money with some of them, but the, the big the big names were Sebastian Haller from Ajax, there, which was reasonably good buy, twenty eight million. Karin Adiami, he's a sort of centre forward stroke winger if you like, twenty seven million from Salzburg. And they actually got Schlotterbeck at eighteen million. Found uh, centre back because they're very clever Dortmund. They're usually very good at bringing in good players because they do tend to lose. I and mean, not to buy in Munich uh, to people like us these days, but there's some of them changes of names. But they're the big ones. And yeah, so far you know I'm to be happy with the three 0 win over Copenhagen. It was competent. Um, they did enough. It was an, an easy victory against. Let's face it, most most people's whipping boys in the group Copenhagen. No disrespect, but that that's what how they looked at. So that's not too bad, 3 0. Uh, just behind us, just behind us, obviously, on goal difference. But yeah, a bit of a mix in the league, though. If you look at the league uh, position, they're in six at the moment, and they've played six. Sorry, they're in, I think they're in four, isn't it? Fourth? Yeah, I think they're in fourth, actually. I did this before the, uh, the, the last game. Uh, anyway, they're up there. They're up, they're up there in the top six. It could be six, it could be four. Please forgive me. I will put on the screen which, which one it is. They played six, one, four, lost two. I just I just have four for my mind for some reason, although I wrote six down here. And they beat uh, the games he played, the six games, he beat uh, Leverkusen with a goal through Roos. Uh, they beat Friedberg at their place uh, with Gittens, Mukoko and Wolf scoring. They lost at home to Werder Bremen, yeah, I think it was the last 94 for 95th minute, something like that. They were winning 2-1, so that was a disappointment. Guerrero scored the, Guerrero scored the goals and Brandt in that one. Uh, they beat Hertha Berlin away. Modesti scored. He's, he's he's a familiar name from last season, and he got really well. A lot of people were questioning this game. A lot of people watched it because of, of course, no Premier League games. But they lost to Leipzig, three nil, and people asking if it was a weak team. And I don't think it particularly was. Just one or two names on the bench you thought might be in the starting lineup. But I think I think the, the manager's just trying to make a, a few changes and get used to things at the moment. So I thought it was a, a reasonable team Dortmund put out. They didn't forsake this for winning for, uh, for this Champions League game. I'm fairly sure they didn't because at the end of the day, they're on, still on the same points as the league leaders. So there's, they're not going to give up on the league this soon to concentrate on the Champions League. That's for sure. That's not usually Dortmund's way. They like to have a good run in their own league anyway. So I don't think it was particularly was a weak team. I think it was just uh, just trying to swap swap a few players about. Certainly some good names in there. And uh, if you look at both those losses, I mean, they did come against opposition they expect to do a little bit better against. But if you look at the, the, the league leaders, Bayern Munich at the moment, who are, as I said, are third favourites for the Champions League, not, out, not, not thought to be outstanding this season. They've got exactly the same points as Dortmund. They've won three and drawn three. So they've got 12 points. Dortmund have got 12 points. I think the more worrying thing, perhaps, for Dortmund in this one was there was no shots on target. I think they had about five shots in the game against uh, Leipzig. There was no shots on target. And in those six games, they've only scored eight goals, which isn't great, which tells us life without Haaland uh, will need adaptation, of course, over the season. And also, don't forget, they're trying to bed in these new players as well. But that was the first game of the season in the league, you know, in the league that they hadn't actually hit the target. So that, that's a positive for Dortmund. So it's the first time they've not managed to get a goal in the six games. So nothing wrong with that. So some of the new faces not not making an instant impact probably. But when you've got uh, people like Roos and uh, Reyes, Roos, how you pronounce that, and Bellingham in particular are still about. They've definitely got players who can hurt us. I say Belling Bellingham particularly had a good game last season. Uh, the last time we played them at the Etihad. So, going into this, yes, City are firm favourites to win it, as you can see from the odds. But, as always, it depends on, yep, yeah, Pep and City, of course, it does. And with the forced rest, if you like, for the sad circumstances, we've had no Tottenham game, of course. Uh, so, at least Pep will have a little chance to have a look at people like Walker and Stones. But, as I said, I doubt they will start this game. I think they'll be on the bench coming back from injuries. Of course, Laporte's still out, long-term injury. I'm not too sure there's too many problems apart from those guys. So I think uh, it will be confident for this. It will be confident that we can make it six points out of six. And yes, all right, Dortmund beat Copenhagen. But then we've got to play Copenhagen. We play them back-to-back. -back. I think I think that's what usually happens. I'm sure that's the same this season. You know, uh, if we can get six points going into the two Copenhagen games, we, we could have qualified, uh, you know, fingers crossed, uh, with a couple of games to spare easily. 
So decisions are decisions which we tend to do after a player rating show, if you like. And say oh, this is straight after what I would have done for the Seville game. So obviously it would have been for the Spurs game originally. So if we, we move it a little bit forward, a few days extra. Pep was forced uh, in the Seville game, but I think uh, Seville or Sevilla, how you pronounce it, please forgive me if I, I always pronounce things the wrong way. The Sevilla game, uh, Pep, I don't think he wanted to play people like Kanji and Gomez. I thought he might have wanted to play one of them, but not both, and he was forced to play both, and it worked. He worked on the night. Kanji showed his experience. You know, he's been around for a while. He was at Dortmund playing playing top top football, so why not? So it was interesting, but Pep was forced just a little bit. He got his hand forced a little, I think, think for that severe game. And now he's had a little bit of chance that some of these niggles are, come, are going to come back from injury. But as I said, I still think Stones and War can probably be discounted for this one. So it still does give a chance for Gomez and the Can Akanji, if you like, in this game. And of course, both look quite capable in that severe game, despite, all right, the opposition, they didn't look the greatest opposition. They're not doing very well in the, the league at the moment. But as we said, Dortmund are struggling just a little bit to get the right mix, although they can they can damage us. So if you look at who played against Seville, but won't or possibly won't against Dortmund, I'm not Pep am I? But I'm just trying to put my Pep head on, which is, is very difficult. Uh, he likes to play a more settled Champions League lineup, so I can't see many changes to that Sevilla team. Uh, so if you look at that team, Edison, Cancelo, Akanji, Diaz, and Gomez. I mean, Cancelo and Diaz. Chewins, uh, I don't think there's anything to doubt, doubt there. And again, with the proviso of Walker and Stones not being fit enough to start this match, uh, I think Aki will come in. Aki will come in for this. I think he'll come in alongside Diaz. So I think Akanji, although he's ex Dortmund, and I won't be surprised, it'll be interesting to see, but I won't be surprised if he plays. But I can see Akanji just stepping down for this one. But I do expect Gomez to perhaps get another game. Um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a left, he's a left back. Uh, you know, obviously Pep can play with the defence and move people over there like Aki. But I think he'll play Gomez at left back, move Aki next to Diaz, and uh, of course Cancelo is is uh, pretty much a shoe in to start on that right hand side with Walker not being there. I mean, this is all about, isn't it? So that's the defence, if you like. It's all about dominating the ball and possession in these Champions League games. Again, especially against Dortmund, who don't mind taking on the, the lion's share of possession. But obviously against City, it's not easy, is it? So if you look about the middle three that plays Sevilla, Rodri, Bernardo, KDB, uh, yeah, I think all three of those are going to play. Whether they'll play in that position, I'm not too sure. I prefer to see Bernardo a little bit higher up in this one. So that we can perhaps get Gundo into that into that middle three, if you like. But again, Gundo, Gundo can swap and change like anybody. But uh, yeah, those middle three against Sevilla, don't expect any change there. Rodri, Bernardo, KDB. And up front, of course, we had Folding, Grealish and Haaland. I don't think Grealish is going to get a game. He didn't play very well, unfortunately. Uh, not got off to the greatest start, injury-wise, etc. So I don't think Grealish is going to play. So that's where I think uh, Bernardo will play a bit further up and allow Gundogan to sit back in that sort of middle three or swap and change, you know, how Pep likes to play. But very fluid within that forward midfield area, apart from obviously Haaland, who's now a dedicated, more or less dedicated centre forward now, isn't he, guys? We, we know what position he's playing. We've had plenty of options to have a look. So my 11, let me know what you think, guys. Uh, my 11, Edison, Cancelo, Diaz, Aki Gomez, Rodri, Gundo, KDB, Bernardo, Foden and Haaland. I think that's it. And unlucky, yes, unlucky, I think, at the moment, not to be getting a game. Mares is unlucky, like, he gets plenty of Champions League games. I think he'll miss out on this one. Akanji, as we said, no surprise to see him starting in this, but I think he may be unlucky. Phillips, again, came on, obviously, against Sevilla. He, he's going to obviously not be put in there ahead of Rodri, so he's going to be a bit unlucky. And, of course, Palmer, who played superbly, I thought, when he came on against Sevilla, but this this is going to be Palmer's role this season. We're not going to expect too much more than what we've seen already from Palmer, especially in that Sevilla game, and it was fantastic, absolutely brilliant. I thought he had a cracking 20, 25 minutes, however, however long it was. So that's it. I mean, as I say, that's the main guys. I think I don't think I missed anyone out. As I said, I'm assuming... Stones and Walker will not be 100% fit. If one or two of them are on the bench, then great. They might get a little bit of a run out. We do have a, uh, I'm not too sure whether we're playing Wolves away, guys. I'm a bit out of it at the moment, a bit out of the, the what's happening. But if we are playing Wolves away, well, that's been cancelled. Then uh, obviously it's the international break, then, isn't it? Uh, I think we'll take the game to Dortmund. 
Uh, I don't think they're as good a Dortmund team as we played last time we played them. Is this City team better than the City team that played Dortmund last time? I think it is. I think it is, but on the basis of who we've got fit, perhaps defensively, not quite, but I don't. Th- I think our defence will be attack, I think, in this one. I think it'll all be about, and that's why I'm hoping for more than two, three, you know, a two or three goal winning margin for City in this one at least. Uh, I'm hoping we'll take the game to, to Dortmund. They've proved they can let goals in. So I'm hoping we can do that. And hopefully, uh, if we are two or three goals ahead, Alvarez, who, sorry, Alvarez is one of the guys that has been unlucky not to get in this team, will get a decent half an hour run out, something like that, and Phillips as well, so to get some decent match time in this. So that's it. Let me know what you think, guys. That's my thoughts. I think I've got everyone to say it's, my, my, mind's not, my mind's been a bit, um, uh, a bit suffering with the sun. It's, it's so warm here. It's unbelievable. I like to potter about me, but... I, only at the night I can do it, you know, for three or four hours at the night. I like to, I don't like to be uh, on that sunbed all day. As you can probably tell, I'm not, overly, I'm not a big sun worshiper. I've got a lot of freckles and moles, so I try and stay out with the sun covered up as much as I can. But uh, I'm a bit limited to what pottering about I can do because it's just so hot uh, to get out and about, and it's very hilly. And I, I'm, 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 I'm a bit old now, guys, but uh, so. It's lovely, it's lovely, but it's uh, perhaps not the perfect holiday for me, but I am enjoying it, and uh, it's great to get a rest and well, get a bit, a bit of a lie-in before I have to start getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning again, but that'll, that'll soon come round, it always does, doesn't it? But anyway, let me know what you're thinking, guys, never mind what I'm doing here and sunning myself to say I've got three days left as I'm recording this, so I'll make the most of them. And obviously the next match report, player ratings, the Dortmund game, I'll be back in the UK and hopefully I've had a chance to watch it, which is more important. Hopefully I'll get back in time to go get to the Etihad and watch it as well. I've got my ticket, so I've got it on my phone anyway. So we'll see how that works out. I can't give you using charge, guys, if you for haven't yet announced a referee as I'm recording this referee and line so I don't know who's in charge. Let me know. Let me know who's in charge because I've not been able to find that out yet. Useless. UEFA. Useless. Absolutely waste of time. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your teams. Let me know your thoughts. It'd be great to hear from you. I'll be seeing you all again very, very soon back in the same country as uh, the majority of you. Not all of you, of course. But uh, I'll be doing my live shows, etc. But join me for the, of course, I'll be carrying, I've been carrying on the Benjamin Mendy trial and I will also be back for the player ratings and stat show of this Manchester City Dortmund game. Thanks for watching, guys. Please, until we meet again. That's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now.